Well, we're doing something different today. Uh, starter on my F-150 here uh, has actually problems. Uh, I drove it to Louisville last night, which is about an hour trip. I think it's 60 miles from here, maybe 50. I don't really know. But anyways, when I got there, it was making some kind of weird sound. And make a long story short, I get home, check, and pull the starter and found that the Bendix, or the drive here, uh, either one, isn't working. Hmm, I have company. Oh, okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to tear this apart and find out what's wrong with it. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull the actual solenoid cover off. It looks like a 5 sixteenths. Yep, that is a 5 sixteenths. And this will also give me a clue as to what kind of shape the rest of the starter is in. And it just lifts right off. And there's some wear in here also. And probably what we'll do is take that apart and we'll clean it real good. How this works, it's just a big magnet here. And of course that just pulls this down. Uh, this brass piece right there that becomes magnetized and when it does that pulls that piece down and shoots this gear out that's pretty much how a solenoid works and hmm, text message and that's what that is a solenoid a solenoid is an actual component that moves that causes that creates a mechanical movement and of course the uh, part that goes on the inner fender is just a starter relay and like I said, you know, that seems to be in decent working order, just in the need of some lubrication. And of course, when you take these apart, you kind of got to be careful with these bolts that go in here. They hang, sometimes they're very easily to strip the threads off if you're not careful. Of course, that's a long bolt. And when we get it out, we'll look at it, and of course the threads look good. And one more, and the nose cone will be ready to come off. And always when you pull these out, take extra care to not let this bottom part come out. Because when you do, brushes come out and you have to put all that back together. It's not the worst thing to happen, but it's just twice as work should it come out. And of course we just take a little hammer, tap it a couple of times. Okay, what we'll do right here. I never noticed this is going to have to all come apart so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these bolts back in for now then I'm going to move remove the roll 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 pin and take it back apart okay back where I started from and I went ahead and removed that roll pin right there it's laying around here somewhere oh here it is it is right there. Of course, I uh, will have to keep track of that. I may even replace it with a new one. But anyways, so we'll take our hammer and just tap lightly. There we go. Just enough to break it loose. Let me reposition the camera here. Yeah, a little far away. Uh, 
Let me try this. There we go. And the nose cone should just slide right off. Just like that. And there's the nose cone. And there is the disassembled starter. Like I said, be careful not to disturb this part right there because if you do, the brushes will fly apart. It's hard to put back together. Not impossible, but just hard. Extra work. Another part you have to watch for is after you removed this nose cone, you see up here in the end, it has a tiny thrust washer and a little bushing. Uh, be sure to keep that. And of course there is a little C-clip that holds that on. Okay, well, I've got my starter drive. Uh, of course, there's the water slip. And that's what it looks like. And I found a replacement spring. Also, when off camera, I took all this stuff out and cleaned all the grease, oil, and painted it. Anytime you work on something like this, you want to go ahead and get it clean. You don't necessarily have to paint it, but it always looks good, especially if you're going to do this for someone else. Uh, I've done it in one of the first ones I've done. I just took it apart and rebuilt it and put it back together, and they brought it back and said, well, you didn't do anything because it's, it's filthy, it's still, it's still greasy. So after that, I decided I'd just clean them up, paint them, make them look new anyway. But we're going to go ahead and start the assembly process. I'm going to put this on. Sounds fun. The first thing you want to do is if that's been, if that's rough, uh, you might want to dress that with some emery cloth. I'm lucky. That one's kind of smooth, so I'm just going to put just a little bit of oil on this. Not very much. And just kind of go around it a little bit. Just like that. And I'm going to check the operation. And that seems to be smooth. But there is a problem. It does not slide on to the shaft. And it stops right there. So we're going to check the old one. We are going to compare them. And you probably can't see them too well on camera. But there is a difference. That one slides on. And this one doesn't. And they sent me the wrong one. How about that? Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to measure this part right here. And you probably can't see it too well. And it looks like it won. And, or, yeah, 620 thousandths is the diameter of that part and the old one it should be just a little bit larger it's just a little bit larger oops can't see it and we measure the new one and it's just a little bit larger just as well so that part is the same now we measure the in, inside of it. And I'm left handed, so you can't have to bear with me. And that is, oop, looks like 462 thousandths. And that is 
400 and 62 thousandths as well. But I'm trying to find why or what the discrepancy is. They're identical in every aspect. But it doesn't fit. So evidently, there is something different inside here. I don't know. So I'm going to fool with this for a minute and keep measuring and comparing. 